Scrolling back up here to our atmosphere, let's re-enable that. We'll dive inside our material network. And we'll start working here. So the first thing we need to do is change this from a surface shader into a volume shader. And we'll get an error here because we have the wrong type of input connected. That's OK. We'll deal with that in a second. Let's change this to volume volume and delete the surface out of here. I can even change this to volume output. And we need to put a volume in here. So we'll grab a material X volume. We'll plug that in. This has two different inputs. The VDF input is for the parts of the volume that do shading. So things like density, for example. And EDF is for the emissive parts of the volume, the emissive uh, volume grids. So here we only have density, so we have no EDF grid, although we could use density for EDF. But for what we're doing, we're going to be using the VDF and not using EDF. So we just need to grab a VDF. We have two to choose from. We're going to choose the anisotropic VDF. We'll plug that in and put that in to there. Now we need to grab our density. So we will use a geometry property to grab that. It's a float value, and we need to make sure get it exactly case sensitive here, so lowercase d. And we'll want to make sure that we can scale this density value by something. So I'm going to multiply it. And then we'll want to be able to color the absorption and color the scattering. So let's put a constant here. Make sure to change that to color. Default it to white. I'm going to make two of those. And then we will multiply those by our density. So color in first, density second. That's going to be for absorption. And this is going to be for scattering. I'm going to restart the render here just to make sure all these updates kicked in. Sometimes it's a little slow here. All right, I think it did. Now. For scattering, I'm going to grab a nice kind of light bluish color here. And hopefully that'll be OK. And we're going to bring our density way down. So density, let's try 0 0.03. That's still a bit high. 0 0.05, somewhere around there. And it's kind of nice that we've got this mountain in the background that we can look at a little bit for reference. Obviously, the colors, the base colors are a bit darker, so we're not going to get a one to one match, but it gives us some idea of what the overall contrast level is back there. Now, because this is an isotropic, you can play with the anisotropy values in here. And I do believe you can even go negative. Not sure how helpful that is. So you can play around and balance that out, the anisotropy and the overall density here. But keep in mind, right now, we're coloring over the HDRI background there. That might not be desirable for you. For now, I'm going to keep it at that, which is just like a little bit of a simple haze back there. Materials aren't the only thing that we can adjust to work on this image here. We can also add a lens shader to the camera, which you'll see has a bunch of really interesting things we can do to add to the realism of our render. We're going to go after we've imported our camera, and we will put down an edit camera or camera edit node here, put that down and go all the way over to the karma setting. 
and choose set or create the lens shader and enable that. We also have to make sure we say which camera we want to do this for. So let's go and find our camera and drag that camera in. For the lens shader VOP, we are going to need a material network to place that in. So we put down a mat net here and dive inside. And then we want to grab the physical lens right here, Karma physical lens. I'm going to dive up here and plug that in. So we'll go into our mat net, into our physical lens, and we'll do a relative path to that. So nothing's happening here because we haven't adjusted any settings, but why don't we start? I'm not using depth of field in here because this is meant to be, um, you know, a fairly large scale scene and we don't really want the mountains going out of focus, but we can do a little bit of lens distortion in here. If we wanted to, we can do some quadratic distortion and you'll see as I dial this up that this lens shader is actually working correctly. Now we're not going for anything like that. And we're certainly not going for anything like that but we can have just a touch of it. Now that's way too much. So let's go and add just a teeny tiny little bit. Something kind of barely perceptible. Now I wouldn't want to get too out of control with aberration and I tend not to anyway, just because the render time is really heavy here, but I'm going to enable it just so you can see what it does for the image. Now we might have to pause the video here for a second while this renders and come right back. Now the effect here is quite grainy. We don't have enough render samples in here to really support this effect. So we would have to bump up our quality quite a bit, which we have to anyway, we're not at production quality right now. But if you look closely and it might be tough to see in the video here, but you should see it on your end when you're rendering at home you'll definitely see the effect. You'll see this nice little color separation happening. And it does quite a bit for adding some realism uh, to the image because no CG images should be 100% perfect. It, they should be like horribly misaligned in terms of their color components. But if something's meant to look like it was filmed on a, a camera or something like that, you would have very, very subtle misalignments of um, the red, green, and blue channels but uh, usually it's not that pronounced and not that perceptible like it is here. I'm gonna dial this down now to zero and get rid of that. Now, one thing that we can do in here, which I think is really nice, is we can start to play around with the overall balance of the image and make a couple stylistic choices here. One thing I like to do is add vignetting. We might need to go to somewhat of a high value here. So we can vignette the image just a little bit here, adds a little bit of focus into the center and start playing with our exposure a bit as well. As well as tinting. So Maybe this was meant to be more of a Martian landscape. And there's this kind of orange tint over the lens. You know, we could go very stylized with it if we wanted to. Or back off a touch and be a bit more realistic. I'm kind of liking where this is warming that up quite a bit. And then for a little bit further stylization, maybe going into our atmosphere here and taking our blue and bringing it a bit more saturated in that mountain in the background, maybe right around there. Now I know before anybody gets at me, 
there would not be a blue sky on Mars. But we're not really being on Mars here. We're just playing around and having fun. Now this image is starting to look pretty good. As I scrub forward a bit, everything looks like it's behaving the way that it's supposed to. And at this point, what I would do is start setting up our Karma render settings here and fire off some renders.